Alright, so I think we kind of landed up like this. We just keep like walking this way. Oh my god! How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again to give you another gameplay commentary. We're talking about the experience that has been for playing a Halo 2 flight as it recently has concluded. So we're going to be talking about multiple things like the framiness that's happening with the game, the massive keyboard experience, theater mode, campaign experience, as well as having to deal with the frustration of invites in this. So let's get right into the content. All right guys, so we got ourselves a match here on BTB for Halo 2 Classic. I know my last commentary was on this map as well, but uh, you know, there isn't a whole lot of content when it comes to the choices on this one. We got started out with the kill, so that's good too. So there's a few topics I wanted to touch on with this video, which let me tell you guys, the experience overall has been really good. It definitely has its issues, don't get me wrong, but I've really been enjoying my time playing this flight and cannot wait until the full release of this game around everybody on PC. And gotcha. So let's kind of start off with some of the good things, obviously. It's been a pretty smooth experience playing this game on PC. Uh, there hasn't really been any glaring bugs or issues that like, or game breaking kind of stuff. Like it's all been pretty good. So I've been having a fun time playing this. I can, I've been spending hours and hours and hours playing this flight and it's been playing as it should be, which is pretty freaking great. But I do I also want to touch on some of my issues I've had with this flight. One of those issues being the unlimited frames issue when it comes to uh, Halo 2 Anniversary. Right now I'm playing on unlimited frames for Halo 2 Classic and right now I'm getting about locked at 180 which is another topic I want to touch on with frames but first I was uh, just talking about the experience of unlimited frames on H2A. It, it's not good. Even though you're getting like 120 frames it is really framey. I mean really framey to the point where I'm like dude it's not even worth playing at unlimited frames and you're better off just uh you know, putting your, locking your frames at 60. I do understand that uh, the variable frame rate is still technically like a, a beta experience. Uh, why is this guy shooting at me? <laughs> okay, dude. I know it's, a, it's still kind of like an experimental thing with the variable frame rate. I really hope this soon they get it down. I mean, it's kind of the same kind of framiness that you have with like Halo Reach. So, I mean, if you play on unlimited frames in Halo Reach and you don't mind it, then you won't mind it with Halo 2 Anniversary. <gasps> oh, oh my god, I was gonna get these guys. That's another one. Can we get this guy too? Can we get you? Dang. Come here. There we go. And so, mainly what I've been finding myself doing is actually locking my frames at 60 when playing Halo 2 Anniversary because I'm just not finding it an enjoyable experience. Oh my god, you guys are getting saucy with me over here. That's a one. That's another one. There's a Spartan there. That's a two. So Halo 2 Classic plays totally fine on unlimited frames. Actually, that's why I prefer to play it on. It's been really enjoyable. Uh, so, but another thing is I do want to mention about the frame rate is that it's been locked in multiples of 60 on campaign and in multiplayer. So essentially, you're either playing at 60 FPS, 120, 180, and if you're, you know, got to your, you know, 240. By the way, I'm currently rocking a uh, Ryzen 7 2700 along with a uh, 1080 Ti from my PC specs if you're oh so curious. There's a running oh, that run right by Kill Frenzy. I don't know why it's called running right in this game. And I'm getting betrayed by my teammate. Alright, sick. Feels good. Oh, if you get this guy. He's still my teammate is still shooting at me. He just wants me dead. For some odd reason. Now they're just ganging up on me. Last <laughs> guy he gets betrayed. What a champion. The HOA you absolutely need to run at the lock 60. Oh, they got me with the rockets. Where? Another thing about like being locked in multiples is 60, which was something we haven't really experienced in previous flights either. So it's kind of curious why it happens in this game, but not other games. There we go. I think there's a little baby buffalo out on the field asking for it. There we go. Like obviously like we play on PC because we want like all the nice juicy little frames and not every monitor out there is locked in the multiple 60 like my frame rate on my monitor is 144 Hertz I would like to play at 144 for the maybe most optimal way to be able to lock my frames at that so then I'd be able to you know play without overstressing my system especially because especially since I like to record I like to stream as well so that's certainly one thing to keep in mind with that stuff but um, right now, it seems to be working all right. 
but I would really like to see them be able to work that out. And I would also really like to see a feature to be able to lock your frames at your monitor frame rate without you having to use V-Sync, because V-Sync tends to also add some input delay, which is something you definitely don't want in your shooter. Oh, he came back for seconds, though. He came back for seconds, but he didn't say S, please. And you go. So obviously, you see me getting a little bit of the gunplay right there. You're probably asking you know, what the mouse and keyboard experience has been like since I've been mainly focusing on that while playing this fight. Uh, I haven't really touched mouse or, I haven't really touched the controller like really at all. Uh, mainly because I prefer to actually play my shooters with mouse and keyboard. And this game actually plays pretty well. I think it's just like a difference between like having like the red radical range being different in this game, obviously. Player movement being different, the way the weapons shoot as well with a battle rifle. What is going on with this guy? <laughs> so it's a certain grouping of factors I feel that kind of makes it so then I, that this actually plays out better on mouse and keyboard than previous experience saying like playing with like CE with the pistol or with the DMR as well. Oh, right back at you, though. <laughs> That's right, back it up here, dude. Oh, it capped it off with a snipe, too. Why not? Oh, extra spicy. Yeah, like I said, something about the movements, something about the red reticle range, something about the bolt spread when it comes to playing with uh, the BR instead of a DMR. There's all those factors that I think take into consideration. Oh, the band just came back for seconds. But uh, I think overall, I think that the experience playing with mouse and keyboard in this game actually is pretty good on H2A and in H2 Classic. So I would expect you guys not to be feeling left out too much when it comes to that experience. Obviously, I didn't really get a chance to play much of the competitive side of things because uh, mainly the H2 competitive playlist when it came to uh, the flight was pretty much dead the whole time. I was never able to get a game in, sadly. Which, just in general, I'd say with MCC, I wouldn't really bother guys a whole lot trying to play this game, like grind out ranks and stuff like that. Oh, we got the win with the most kills in the game. Let's go. 21 and 3. That's a solid game. But let's get into another one. But yeah, to kind of finish what I was talking about, about the matchmaking thing, when it comes to grinding out ranks in MCC, I wouldn't expect uh, a whole lot of popularity between other games besides Halo 3. Halo 3, I think, is going to be the one game you can actually grind out and get good at and have a concurrent population that'd be actually playable everything else i think it'll be a fun little dabble but it'll die out pretty soon but halo 3 when that game gets released i think we'll see a huge boom in the population and a lot more people grinding out that place for sure so yeah i had to hop over to campaign just because the population is really low right now it's the last day of the flight and we go oh my god I forgot my inputs <laughs> they were so active when i was loading in for some reason uh, i just completely skipped the cutscene right there okay that was weird but I was going to bring up, which was an issue certainly in this flight, the campaign load times take forever, pretty much. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit because I wanted to finish off my topic. I wanted to bring, the reason why I brought up Hardcore for Halo 2 is because in that, get those game modes that you'll be playing are the modes you'll be mainly finding the experience of aim assist in the game the strongest because they're all you know smaller 44 arena style maps. The range where aim assist will kick in the most for us. Yeah, that's why I bring it up. Uh, so, I, but from my experience, that uh, aim assist wasn't too strong. I played, I played a ton of social 4v4s, and it was fun. And I was able to hit my shots just fine. And I feel like I might be a little bit better on the controller for Halo than uh, mouse and keyboard, but that's because I'm a little bit out of practice, really. But I'm trying to get the, my groove back into this whole thing. I think uh, if you're playing mouse and keyboard in Halo 2, you won't be feeling like you're playing at a disadvantage like you did with Reach. Like, again, I think it kind of comes to the fact that the way the DMR shoots, how the player movements are, especially in uh, Hardcore Reach, there's a big difference when it comes to uh, how the, the, game, the gun play is in that game. So if you guys don't know about this map, there is a little sneaky spot up here to actually get yourself some more rocket launch ammo if you're also hungry. Like I am right now. You can jump up here and boom. New rocket launcher. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up also is theater mode, as that was the first this is the first time we got a chance to play it on PC, and I definitely got a chance to jump in, get play around with it a little bit. And overall, it plays well. It's rather stable. Uh basically accomplishes everything you want to do on the console with theater. It doesn't on PC. Uh, my only issue with it is just like the input of using the mouse and keyboard when it comes to the controls of it because the way the WSD keys work for your movement, uh, that's how you move your camera unless you find some crazy way to rebind your situation. You know, the kind of camera process like, you know, with Crouch, with like you're moving with your character, it's either 
100% movement speed or no movement speed. So I would like to see maybe if there's a feature that kind of like, maybe you hold down control or something like that, it will you know, re reduce the input sensitivity by half or something like that. Uh, but mainly I, I'm finding myself wanting to use the controller really when it comes to the theater mode. Uh, just because you get that nice little gradual movements that you need Another to do to get like, the screenshots just right or to get the right kind of angle. But if you're just using theater mode to kind of just understand the game better and understand spawns and stuff like that, this would, that would work totally fine for you. Just you know, no problem whatsoever. It is also locked at 60 frames. Uh, this is a known issue with the game and with theater mode. And I would like to see that hopefully get fixed before release. I doubt it. And if it doesn't, it's not that big of an issue for me just because um, you know, I mainly use theater mode for either screenshots or recording clips and I'm going to upload any kind of clips are going to be at 60 frames per second. I don't really know any other uh, video format, video hosting websites that do 120. Uh, but a big issue I was noticing is that they're the load times for the, every mission taking super long. They take their sweet, sweet time trying to get those load times going for us. And so hopefully by the time the game releases, that you know we will be able to have like a decent load time it doesn't make any sense to me why uh, the load times on pc are slower than on the xbox because well my hard drive i guarantee you has a faster read speed than uh, the xbox's hard drive or maybe the xbox hard drive is just like a superhuman machine that i just don't know about but other than that like the movement's super clean uh the you can play on limited frames, it looks super smooth, the gameplay really plays really nice, Master keyboard feels really good in campaign, you will able to switch back and forth between uh, classic and anniversary graphics, it's super cool, it's on the fly like that. So if you're looking just to play the campaign of Halo 2 on PC, dude, get it on PC. Get the higher frame rates, you can get the higher resolution, um, and the precision of the mouse and keyboard, like, it's just going to be the best experience possible for you right there. By the way, look at the Vista right here. This is why I, I play on PC. We can also bump this up to, <laughs> I just like that way it's happening in game right there. But if you bump this up to 120 frames, or 120 frames, 120 FOV, you can see the true expansion that this has to offer. I love the visuals on this map. It's one of my favorite missions in Halo. Uh, it just kind of re gives you that experience of like when you first landed on that Halo ring back in Halo 1, like getting wowed by the visuals and the uh, true scale of everything. It's fantastic. Oh, this lonely elite up here. He doesn't even know. He didn't even know. Oh, the squad's out. Hold up. Never mind. All right, I think in this section that the ghosts just keep coming unless you like hit a checkpoint down here. So we're gonna have to go off and do that. Where did this third guy come from? Did he just like sprint from all the way from the ruins over here? That's so weird. Also, there I did see a weird glitch that happened on this map when it came to uh, the campaign. So we'll see if we can try to replicate that. No guarantees, because I don't know if we can really pull it off. But let's do it. Right, I see you, Elite. A little Elite boy. Okay, or you can just hide. Like, a... where'd he go? It was sneaky little boy. There we go. Get out of here. Oh, and you little boy. I'm sorry, but you're just gonna have to go. I'm sorry. I feel bad when they're running away. I just feel mean doing that. I saw that. I saw the weird glitch was that if this thing falling down and you can walk into it while it's rolling down, it'll shoot you like super high up in the air. So we can see if we can pull that off here. Let's just walk down this way and uh, see if we can get some weird Good. Halo glitchiness now, happening with for us right here. Alright, so I think we kind of land up like this. If we just keep like walking this way. Oh my god, look at this! <laughs> I'm going, I'm zooming, boys! Oh my god. <laughs> the ground control the major top because I just flew up like crazy right there. I guess lastly, to kind of wrap up things when it comes to this video, is my major issue I was having where it was making me want to blow my freaking brains out was such a big issue was well, just trying to invite people i know it sounds ridiculous it should be like a very basic easy thing but for some odd reason this flight was the most triggering thing possible to try to send invites to people i don't know why there's like you know oftentimes i'm streaming when i'm playing these games and so i like to try to get viewers in so if you guys want to play with me 
now catching my stream link in the description down below obviously but uh, it was incredibly frustrating trying to send invites to people to have them join your game sometimes they just like oh, I didn't see the invite or oh the, the uh, notification went away I can't accept it anymore can you do it again and just there were sometimes we were just like oh yeah do I have to be on Steam do I have to be on the Windows Store what's going on here dude it was absolutely infuriating trying to send people invites oh my god so hopefully just let the flights just in general that you know improve the invite invite system just in some way or another just i don't know what you have to do to invite change that up it's just some networking privacy settings or it needs to be more clear to the player or something i don't know just for the love of god that needs to be changed because it was absolutely infuriating oh my god look at this guy he just drove off the map <laughs> he the worst ODST I've ever seen play this game. Warhog flipped, he runs over my friends, drives straight off a cliff. I guess he just couldn't live with himself and just could not handle the fact that he just splattered his own people and just had to end it right then and there, apparently. I'd say release date is definitely gonna be happening in May, but when in May? That is a good question because uh, we had like a bit of a surprise launch when it came to CE coming to PC. It just kind of dropped randomly. Tr previous track record, we've seen that we had Halo Reach drop on December 3rd. And then we had Halo CE also drop on March 3rd. Surprisingly, those are both Tuesdays. So I would think they'd maintain the same kind of cadence of release times and keep it in on a Tuesday. Now this game actually is feeling like a rather finished product. So I would think that maybe like two weeks after this flight's over, which is the day I'm posting this video, is the day of when the flight ends, that I would expect to see probably two weeks after that. So if I had to choose a specific date, it either had to be May 12th, May 19th, or May 26th, we'll see the full release of this game coming to PC. But I would say absolutely it's happening in May, so we're not too far away, guys. I would think less than a month, especially probably two weeks after this flight would be my guess. But yeah, for a quick recap, I'd say it's been a pretty solid experience playing this. I'm really looking forward to the release date. Uh, I definitely would think about maybe doing some more videos like these kind of casual, kind of longer form commentaries where you guys get to kind of chat about the recent topics going on. Uh, I have been seeing some recent uh, potential infinite leaks actually popping out. So I think I might be making a video on that for the next video, guys. So keep an eye on that one for sure. So you guys, that about does it for the whole video. I greatly appreciate you checking the video and watching. Hopefully, if you guys got a chance to play the flight, let me know your experience down below in the comments. Like I said, I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel and miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen over here. Recent uh, news and information videos have been on the loop for the last few days. And I got another video in case you want to check out some more content from me. Make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself updated with all the content and news happening in the Halo community. Thank you so much for watching and I greatly appreciate it. And we'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.